Okay, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday, number 24. Uh, what I'm going to take you through for the next probably period of time is some of the things we spoke about at the start of the year. We had some real basic aims before this season started. And a couple of things we wanted to improve on was our scores against last year in 2009. Teams were averaging just over 100 points against us in 2009. Unfortunately for us, we were only kicking about 77 uh, points for in a game. So at the start of the year, we wanted to actually obviously get the scores against us down. We wanted to try and improve the scores for. Uh, what happened at the end of the year was what we found was that the stats will tell us that the scores against ended up being 89. So, you know, that's an improvement of 15 points per game, which is, a, you know, a terrific improvement. It was probably on the back of a lot, of, a lot more midfield pressure as well. Last year we found that the teams were able to kick a lot of easy goals against us and this year we were able to create more midfield pressure which gave our backs the chance to compete. You know, we forced a lot, of, a lot more higher balls going into our back line and the opposition forward 50. Gave us the chance to spoil, but that midfield pressure was really important for us to achieve this result. So even though 15 points doesn't sound a lot, in the scheme of things, it's, a, it's a, a significant improvement on the year before. So that was the defensive element of it. The attacking side of it was always going to be a challenge for us at the start of the year. I think we had about 18 or 19 players go through our forward line during the year. And what, what that meant was there was a, probably a lower degree of continuity between the, uh, the players who normally play in the forward line. A lot more players going through, that means that less time spent playing together in the game. But what we also found was that our forward line, our shape and our structure really trains, uh, changed significantly during the year. We didn't have, we had Ricky Pettard at the start of the year kicking goals for us, got injured. We had Lyndon Dunn, second half of the year, kick goals for us. But probably the most consistent performer during the year was Brad Green, who, who probably is not the traditional tall type of marking forward. He was more of a leading forward. than for Brad to kick 55 goals was just an, out, you know, just an outstanding performance. And we didn't see the best of Liam Jarrah till the end of the year. So our marking stocks were a little bit low just because of the number of personnel that went through it. Having said that, though, we were able to achieve 80, on average, an 85 points per game, which, is a, which, again, even though it doesn't seem much, nine points, in the scheme of things, it certainly improved. So we had what we wanted at the start of the year, teams kicking less against us. We were starting to turn the, you know, turn the table and kick more points for. The other interesting stat at the, uh, at the end of this year, though, was that the opposition inside 50s and our ability to get the ball inside 50. At the start of the year, we wanted to get around 49 and 50, and we wanted to reduce the opposition to around about 52, which doesn't seem a lot. But at the end of the year, we ended up exactly the same as we did as a previous year. So the stats tell us that even though teams are going inside 50 against us, at least they weren't scoring as easy and as often we were going in the same number of times and to get to 85 on the back of 48 is a, is a good result. It tells us that we're at least getting it in and we're at least scoring more compared to last year. So to take these stats and look for next year, obviously we want to continue this trend. We want to continue to force the scores against us to get lower. We certainly want to improve our scoring numbers, but this is going to be a real significant thing for us next year. You know, we need to really look at trying to get 55 down to as low as we possibly can. OK, just to continue on a bit of a theme with our younger players at the moment, and we'll talk about the, uh, the other players on our list just shortly, but just behind me, there's 20 players up there that have played, if you like, from James Frawley, 61 games down to zero games. And the reason for putting it up is if you look at the names that are up there and you look at the games that have been played, it's really important that the age of the player is one thing, but the most important thing that a player can get over his early career is playing games. So sometimes it's age, but more importantly, it's the games of the players that we really focus in on. I'll give you an example. Carl Morton played his 50th game on the weekend. You know, Carl turns 21 in January. So... He's no longer a 21-year-old, he's a 50-game player, just like James Frawley's a 61-game player now. And there are some games up there that might surprise people in the sense of how many they've played for Melbourne. Grimes is probably the one that's at, at uh, 26 games. He's only a 26-game player, yet this year, Tom Scully's played 21 games. Neville Jett is a 21-game player. So getting games in the players is really important. It's the experience of playing the games that is going to hold these young men here in good stead for us going forward. So when we look, if we project next year, if we said that James Foley is going to be at the end of next year, and if we say that he takes the whole 22 games, he's going to be an 83-game player, James. You know, he's just starting to move in from 60 games plus into the start of the best football ahead of him. 
Same with Carl Morton. You know, he becomes a 72-game player next year. At the end of next year, the 22 games we hope he can get, he becomes a 72-game player. If we get 22 into Scully, he's looking at 43. If we get 22 into Wanamiri, he's 48. All of a sudden now, Trengove's a 40-game player. And when you roll those numbers into these players, Garland becomes 62. Grimes, 48, etc. All of a sudden, when you're rolling games into them, you can see that playing lots of games together is going to be important. Jamie Bennell can play down back. Frawley's a backman. Garland's a backman. Grimes is a backman. And we've actually gone about trying to establish you know, our strength from the back, making sure we've got a back six, seven or eight blokes who can play in those positions. Just as when we've drafted midfielders, midfielders with experience really important. I mentioned Bennell can play down back, but he can play on ball. We haven't seen Blees and we haven't seen Tapscott yet, but the games in the Scully, you know, games into Strauss, he can play down back. Scully midfielder, Trengove midfielder, Jeddah a midfielder, Gisbert's a midfielder. And obviously 22 games in Liam Jarrah, I think we're all going to be really keen to see Liam put 22 games together next year. So the games experience under these guys behind me is going to be really important for us going forward. One of the things that we've been... Uh, caught up in to some degree is actually talking a lot about our young players and you know getting games into them. The thing with the, the guys who's behind me who are going to be here uh, next year, I mean Bruce's experience, Green, Davey, Rivers and Maloney, their experience is really important for us to continue the leadership and also the experiences in playing games but these guys have been significant and with obviously the retirement of James McDonald, really important that those guys over the last two years have really laid a platform for our next generation of leaders and our emerging leaders to really take up some of that mantle. And the work that these guys do with our younger players, but also our mid-tier players, has been exceptional. Let me give you a couple of examples. The guys here generally sit down with a couple of players within their lines. So, for example, Cameron Bruce will sit down with a couple of the younger players, so Brent Maloney in the midfield, and down back, Greeny forward, uh, flash a couple of midfielders, and obviously uh, Jared Rivers down back. Riv's been very prominent in helping our backs with their positioning this year. Certainly uh, James Frawley and certainly Colin Garland have benefited from the, from the knowledge that Riv's been able to pass on. That's one example of what the leaders try and do during the week. It is a week-to-week -week thing because leadership's not a matter of being there now and then. It's a 24-7 thing. These guys have, ha have done it for the last two or three years. And with our group starting to get older in the sense of games played next year, I'm sure that their experience that they've had by passing it on will leave us in a very good position next year to really launch into a better and more successful 2011. Okay, the last stat that we're going to uh, talk about, it's a very basic one where we started from again at the start of the year. We wanted to be scoring more ourselves. We also wanted the opposition to score less. Obviously, we wanted to in increase our inside 50s and decrease the opposition inside 50s. And at the start of the year, we spoke about quarters one. And the first year we won, in 2008, we won 23. Last year... 2009 we won 32. This year, might surprise, but we've won 36 quarters. The difference in the quarters has been, though, that when we've lost quarters, they've been by smaller margins. 2009, when we've lost quarters, we've been beaten you know, significantly, so therefore the loss in points has been certainly high. So even though we've only won 36, the expectation next year is to certainly improve on 36, but it is a week-to-week -week basis. The quarters one are going to be telling at the end of next year and we've, although we're tracking in the right direction, we need to certainly improve from 36 going forward. Next year is obviously going to be a real challenge for us, but uh, for this year I'd like to thank all the people who've supported the Melbourne Football Club this year, not only through membership but coming along and watching us play. Hopefully you'll be with us, you have been with us for the last two years and I think in the next year and the years following I think you're going to be uh, really proud of your football club and you'll be proud to wear the red and blue. So thanks for your support this year but we look forward to a much better next year.